Tonight at 5, the marathon fight against COVID. Those who've been waiting for full approval should go get your shot now. The Pfizer vaccine is FDA approved, but some school staffers are choosing to walk away instead of getting the shot. I think that there's some people who might make a decision based off of that mandate. Freedom over fear! Some vocal parents are fighting school officials over mask mandates. Some are chanting and waving signs. Others are pulling their kids out of school altogether. That is discouraging. It is really discouraging. Tonight, Denver 7 brings you an in-depth look at the effort to keep things close to normal despite lingering threats of coronavirus. Freedom over fear! Freedom over fear! A passionate protest outside of the Douglas County School District offices in Castle Rock this morning. Hundreds of parents showed up angry that the district is forcing students ages 2 to 11 to wear masks. Good evening and thank you for joining us for Denver 7 News at 5. I'm Ann Trujillo. And I'm Shannon Ogden. Now, Douglas County's mask decision has been a week-long tug of war. First, Tri-County Health recommended masks last week. Then on Thursday, Douglas County Commissioners voted to opt out of the Tri-County rules. And then on Friday, the Douglas County School Board opted in. And some parents spent the weekend planning today's protest. Others just quietly made plans to send their kids back to class in masks. Every district is writing its own rules. None can agree on the best way to keep our kids safe. Well, Megan Lopez leads off our in-depth coverage of the mask debate tonight. And Megan, this is a scientific discussion, but the scene today was driven by emotion. That's absolutely right, and it certainly got emotional. It always gets emotional when you're talking about kids. Everybody wants the best for kids. Everybody wants the kids to be healthy. No one wants to return to remote learning again, but that's where the parents in the district disagree. Parents don't want their kids to have to wear masks, and they say that they know better than Tri-County Health Department what's best for their own kids. <laughs> They showed up early in the morning, showed up with signs, showed up with kids, showed up to tell the Douglas County School District they're fed up with mask requirements. We don't want to mask our children and we want the right to decide. I did not sign up when I had children to co-parent with the government. And I just believe that we shouldn't have to wear masks. The district decided last week to go against the county to require masks for kids too young to be vaccinated and the staff that works with them. It's a decision that's angered some so much. I pulled my kids from the school system. I did pull my youngest two from the district and put them in a charter school. I will take them somewhere where they are gonna get the education that they deserve. Like DCSD, charter and private schools in the county can make up their own policies on masking and several have decided to opt out while some pull their kids. I've not done ever anything like this. A couple are getting ready to challenge the current leadership in November. I became passionate over the last year watching kids get pulled in and out of school and I woke up one day and said I'm running for school board. Within the crowd of hundreds of anti-mask parents. Hey guys, no jostling, okay, let's please. We disagree. Three counter protesters who say the district did the right thing. Douglas County is not unanimously opposed to masks. But when we tried to interview them, the parents got angry. Freedom over fear! Freedom over fear! Putting their signs in front of our cameras, chanting to drown out the interview. We understand. Douglas County, excuse me, excuse me, can you please, can you shut up, you shut up. I'm not, ask, I'm not asking you to shut up. I'm asking you to please. Doesn't matter. Trying to block us from hearing the other side, even following them when they moved. I absolutely should have the freedom to speak. And afterward, confronting them. Why are you here? Are you There's three of you. By and large, though, the protest was calm, but these parents hope loud enough for the district to hear. All the way down! Go get the wheel! So we reached out to the school district today to ask them to weigh in on these protests and the pleas from the parents. The district said it didn't really have anything more to add than what it said to us last week about the mask mandates. It did go ahead and add, though, that it only saw a 3% drop in attendance today. Meanwhile, the district is reporting 63 new COVID cases today, including 15 in Chaparral High School. I'm live in Castle Rock, Megan Lopez, number seven. Megan, thank you. Now, even in Douglas County, the rules are not applied equally. Charter schools can make their own decisions on masks. Many will not require them. American Academy says six families have chosen to pull their kids out because students aren't required to wear masks. Another 52 families want to move their kids in because of it. Executive Director Aaron Kane says it's a no-win situation.
Um, this is not a situation where somebody's right and somebody's wrong. Um, th this is hard all around. So I've definitely heard from parents who have um, a medically vulnerable child and they are worried about their child. I've heard from parents who have um, had their had their kiddos be suicidal after all the isolation to include masks and not being able to see and understand the facial expressions of their peers. Um, so it's there is there is a lot there are a lot of hard stories on on both sides of this issue. And Kane says she is keeping a close eye on hospitalizations among children as well as the adults in Douglas County and insists she will pivot if it comes to that. In Adams County, parents use their kids to protest a requirement that younger children wear masks. About 190 of the 560 elementary students who attend Strasburg 31J schools didn't show up today. 35 of the district's 86th graders weren't there either. And to say Superintendent Monica Johnson is disappointed is an understatement. It's why we come, it's why we do what we do, and that's to educate kids, and we can't do it if they're not here. I understand, I do understand the passion that parents have. I really do. And and if this is how they felt like they needed to make a statement um, so that we could take that data and, and present it to maybe somebody who has authority to make a change, um, I guess I understand that, but um, we really need them back. And many schools say they will not require masks without a state mask mandate. And Governor Polis says there's no plan yet for that. Now, he addressed the topic on August 12th. The state is offering surveillance testing and free masks to any districts that want them. The governor says he is respecting local control, but reserving the right to step in if needed. It is possible if a district is failing to implement these, they may fail to stay in person. And we may have to find a way to go to them with a package of things saying, you know what? It's not a good excuse just to say you're all virtual for the semester. We will not allow uh, hangups around particular prevention protocols to prevent kids from being in person in school, which is the best environment to learn. And here's an in-depth look at how different districts are handling the decision. Denver, Jeffco, Adams 14 and Boulder Valley are requiring masks for everyone, regardless of vaccine status. Aurora, Adams 12, and Cherry Creek are requiring masks for some students, not all students. And then there are a handful of districts, including Littleton and Mapleton, not requiring masks for anyone. The CDC recommends masks and three feet of social distancing in schools. The official guidance says in-person learning is the top priority. Of course, recent research shows a split in public opinion. Half of parents believe students and teachers should wear masks. According to an AP poll released this week, a quarter believes teachers and students should not wear masks and the rest have no opinion. The FDA granted full approval today to the coronavirus vaccine made by Pfizer. And Dr. Michelle Barrett with UC Health says the agency based its decision on an extraordinary amount of data. I think this is something that should give people incredible reassurance that the FDA had enough data points to be able to examine the impact, the safety. I mean, we're talking millions of doses. The Pentagon was waiting on this full approval before requiring vaccine for troops. The spokesperson said today that guidance is still in the works. The timeline should be out shortly. And just within the last 10 minutes, Aurora Public Schools announced it will mandate vaccines for teachers and staff. And vaccine mandates could be an additional burden for people struggling to hire. Denver Public Schools runs more than 200 bus routes and the district is at least 50 drivers short and says current drivers must be vaccinated by September 30th. I think that there's some people who might make a decision based off of that mandate. Okay. Um, and since we're, 100, we're at 166 drivers now, um, even if I lose five, uh, that's I mean, we're in, we're in a critical position right now. A recent study shows one in five people would strongly consider quitting their job over a vaccine mandate. Denver Public Schools is considering additional incentives to get people behind the wheel. It's been a hot one again today, 47th day above 90 so far this summer. I'll let you know how many more of those we'll see in the seven day. Denver's mayor is pitching a brand new arena at the National Western Complex. Neighbors say, spend that money elsewhere. Just a slap in the face, I think that's the important thing to highlight. And testimony in the Suzanne Morphew murder case shifts to a blow dart in the family home.
courtroom drama resumed in Chaffee County today as prosecutors attempt to build their case against accused murderer Barry Morphew. He's accused of killing his wife, Suzanne. His attorneys maintain his innocence, but today we learned that he asked for immunity in the days after his wife went missing. Here is Denver 7's Jason Grenauer. This came out late this afternoon inside the courtroom during this preliminary hearing. A retired FBI agent testified that in March of this year, Barry Morphew asked him, can you give me immunity if I sit and just open my life to you? Barry Morphew is charged with the murder of his wife, Suzanne, who went missing on Mother's Day 2020. Now, this is the preliminary hearing to determine if there's enough evidence to move this case to a trial. Now, that FBI agent, Johnny Grusing, said he believed that Barry was trying to make a deal with any information that he had. We also learned today that Barry Morphew immediately told a coworker when his wife went missing that it's got to be a mountain lion or cougar that had killed her. Now, the defense spent time poking holes in prosecution arguments surrounding the cap of a tranquilizer dart that was found in the Morphew home and the hotel room that Barry had stayed in during a work trip that had allegedly smelled of chlorine. Barry Morphew faces charges of first degree murder, tampering with a body, possession of a weapon and trying to influence a public servant. One more day of preliminary hearings are scheduled for tomorrow. In the newsroom, I'm Jason Grenauer, Denver 7. Denver's pitch for a new arena is facing stiff opposition from people who live near this proposed site. Up next, an in-depth look at the $190 million debate. And after this hot start to the work week, Mike Nelson's tracking just how long this 90 degree weather will stick around. An emotional reunion overnight at DIA. A Colorado man welcomed his wife and two children home from Afghanistan. They were visiting family when the Taliban took over the country earlier this month.
but it was very hard, very long, but I'm happy it's over. I bet that family does not want to be identified given the situation in Kabul tonight. Today, a State Department official said there are still several thousand U.S. citizens and family members trying to leave that country. And President Biden said today that the U.S. is now reconsidering the deadline to withdraw all 5,800 U.S. troops from Afghanistan. Right now, the deadline's tomorrow. The leaders of the Group of Seven will meet tomorrow to talk about creating stability in Afghanistan. President Biden says his first priority is evacuating the remaining American citizens, even if there is an extension, which he said would only be by a few more days. Tonight, we could see another step forward from $190 million arena proposal in Denver. City Council will decide whether to send this measure to the ballot. The project would go on the National Western Center space, and many who live near this proposed expansion site can give you their vote on this right now. This is Denver 7's Ivan Rodriguez. All this rock, dirt, and space at the National Western Center could be completely transformed, but not everyone who lives in the Globeville area Swansea neighborhoods is excited about the change. It's just a slap in the face. I think that's the important thing to highlight. For his whole life, Alfonso Espino and his family have called the Globeville area Swansea neighborhoods home. He says the almost $200 million proposal for the National Western Center isn't what his community needs. That's money that should be going into permanent housing, permanent public housing solutions, social uh, program investment. The plan would build a new arena at the National Western Center, preserve and renovate an older one, as well as bringing in more jobs and money. But for Espino, who lives less than half a mile from National Western, this proposal is out of touch with their reality. This campus that seeks to be an innovator in things like food, right? When I live in the food desert, it seeks to be uh, championing, you know, environmental issues when I live in the most polluted zip code in the country. How can it address the problems when it's avoiding them completely? Me siento enojada, frustrada con la ciudad. For that reason, part of the community and city council members gathered outside the steps of the city and county building to voice their concerns. This venue is being justified as a jumpstart to our economy, knowing that it'll be at least five years before we'll even see this venue come online. They'd like the last remaining piece of public land at National Western to be used to develop a community vision as an act of reparations after they say National Western dispossessed many of their land. It's important for the people that have been harmed to be the ones addressing those harms and offering solutions. The National Western proposal is the largest portion of a $450 million measure proposed by Mayor Hancock. The mayor is convinced his proposal will help Denver recover from the pandemic. Ivan Rodriguez, Denver 7. Nearly two dozen people are dead and entire neighborhoods gone after floods in Middle Tennessee over the weekend. Some towns got 17 inches of rain Saturday that might end up being a record for the whole state of Tennessee. Wow. Recovery efforts are ongoing tonight. Schools in the region close at least through the end of the week and state leaders tonight are asking for patience mm. and for prayers. Well, Mike Nelson's tracking conditions across Colorado tonight for us. Hey, Mike. Hey, Ann, just as a side note, that's as much rain in one day as the Denver area typically sees in an entire year. Now, this evening, there is no precipitation around our area, just some scattered clouds, and that's what I expect for the rest of the evening. 85 degrees at 7 p.m., 9 p.m., 77, 72 degrees by the time we get to 11 p.m. Check out this gorgeous picture from Haji Mahmood up in the upper Arkansas Valley, and boy, it is nice to see those beautiful blue skies once again back here in Colorado. And look at the smoke forecast. There's still a lot of smoke back in California, northern Nevada, up across the northern Rockies. But for the next couple of days, it mostly stays up there. And although we have low level ozone concerns along the Front Range, the wildfire smoke has really cleared out across the state. Hot day today, top temp getting up to 94, only four shy of the record set last year. The average high now is slipped back to 87, average low at 57 degrees. Right now, it's 93 still out at the airport but it is 88 outside of our studios. Barometer 2996 rising, winds from the north-northwest at 9. The main storm track and the areas of smoke have gone to the north of us now. They're going to stay up there for a couple of days. So overnight tonight, we will be clear. 
and very pleasant by early tomorrow morning. Mild conditions expect on the plains with lows in the 60s. Southeast Colorado, upper 50s to around 60 Denver metro area. A cool 40 at Leadville, 41 degrees at Gunnison and even 39 at Walden. Now tomorrow we start with clear, mild conditions in the morning. Sunny and hot by midday in the afternoon. It's going to be just a hot, dry day across the state with temperatures up to 102 at Lahana, 103 at Lamar, 95 expected in Denver. That's the map late tomorrow. Looking ahead to Wednesday, about the same story. Thursday, a front comes in, and that will bring us some cooler weather and some scattered storms although not a lot of them. Here's the forecast tonight. Mostly clear, mild and 60. Tomorrow, hot day, 95 degrees with sunny skies expected. Extended forecast calling for another day in the 90s coming up on Wednesday. Thursday, a little cooler, better chance of some storms. A few storms Friday and 90. Saturday is back to 92. And then there's a little bit better change in the weather for us Sunday, Monday with cooler temperatures and a better chance of showers and thunderstorms expected on Sunday. Stay with us. We'll be right back. And we're back. <laughs> and tonight marks a major change for Powerball Lottery. For the very first time, it's going to be drawing on Monday night. Yep. Starting tonight, there will be three Powerball drawings per week. They will happen on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. There's also a new bonus game after each drawing. Powerball is adding a bonus play for an extra dollar you can play your same set of numbers that will be drawn again right after the Powerball drawing. And the top prize in that is $10 million. And this is all about money. Lottery officials hope the extra weekly drawing will create bigger jackpots more often. Up next, an ancient technique for staying on the road to success.